Hi, I'm Jennifer Nichols, Interim President at Johns Hopkins Baby Medical Center and past co-chair of Go Red for Women in Baltimore. Welcome to the Red Chair Series. I am joined today by Dr. Tala Al-Talib. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me a little bit more about you. What got you interested in medicine and specifically in cardiology? When I uh, was in school, um, I always was interested in science and I always was driven to learning about how the body works, how patients deal with illness. One of the defining experiences that kind of helped me decide to go into medicine was the fact that my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer at a very young age. Her uh, younger sister also was diagnosed, unfortunately, much later than my mother and did not um, survive her illness. Helping someone get through a very difficult part of their life, navigating something very scary for them, I was always drawn to, to that. My mother was diagnosed with postmenopausal breast cancer and she has a congenital heart issue. And so I wasn't aware of the connection between breast cancer patients and their treatment and cardiac disease. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure, absolutely. Breast cancer is obviously very, very common in, in women, um, but the number one killer of women in America is actually heart disease. With the advent of new uh, medical therapies for breast cancer, women are surviving their cancer, but what they ultimately end up succumbing to is heart disease. A lot of women who undergo breast cancer therapy often develop heart disease, either before, during, or after their cancer treatment. As a physician, when you're presented with a patient who has kind of existing heart disease, does that change the conversation in terms of the types of treatments they receive? The patients that are referred to see uh, us in cardiology specifically fall into three categories. One is the patient who is about to undergo therapy who may have some comorbidities. For instance, they have really difficult to control blood pressure. The other group are patients such as breast cancer patients actively undergoing chemotherapy. Some of the other groups of patients that are referred to see us are patients who unfortunately develop a weakened heart muscle during chemo. Finally, the third group of patients that we see are the survivors. So the patients that have survived their cancer, they may develop a long-term complication from their therapy. What advice do you have for your patients who are either experiencing breast cancer or heart disease? One of the most important things you can do for your health is to stay active making sure that you eat a healthy diet. Cancer feeds off of sugar. That means uh, avoiding refined sugars, things that are highly processed, a diet full of fresh uh, fruits and vegetables, cooking with extra virgin olive oil, having a healthy amount of fish in your diet. That's incredibly important. And that has ramifications on your uh, cholesterol control. Obesity is associated obviously not only with higher cardiovascular risk, but also with a higher risk of breast cancer. So having a low fat, uh, heart healthy diet can also uh, play a role in uh, reducing breast cancer risk. Uh, does age play a factor um, in any of the patients that you see? Cardiovascular disease is can be a disease of aging, obviously. I certainly see a lot of older patients in my practice, but one of the special group of patients to me are female patients, whether they be younger or middle-aged, um, who have breast cancer. Especially, you know, the younger women, the ones that are in their late 30s, early 40s, it can be a very uh, a huge blow to them in terms of their diagnosis. But at the same time they're dealt with this blow, okay, this chemo that I need is actually hurting my heart. So that's a really special group of patients that I, I love to see and work with. And we do push through with chemo. So what advice would you have for a young physician like yourself who might be interested in stepping into the field of cardiology? There are a lot more women going into medicine. Cardiology, on the other hand, tends to be a very male-dominated specialty. I think women tend to like to see other women physicians because I feel like we understand each other. Some of the things that I ask in my clinic visits may be things that um, other men may not think about. You recognize that, it, that there's a cumulative effect of all of these life experiences that we have as females. The way we offset that is with a lot of these preventative measures. A lot of the, the women I see, maybe they're mothers, maybe they're not, maybe they're busy working uh, women, maybe they're not. We can find a lot of commonalities and identify, you know, yeah, I have a busy job, I have kids to come home to, and so I identify with the stress that you're experiencing. Having someone who kind of identifies with that and may or may not be in a similar life stage as you, I think um, this can be comforting. Well, thank you so much for being here today on the Red Chair series, Dr. Altalib. Thank you so much for having me. I had a really good time talking about women's health and cardiovascular health with you.